Praise the Lord. It's good to be with you on this Sunday evening. We're thankful for the opportunity once again to minister the word of the Lord. And uh, we hope that this will be a blessing to you. We do want to remember that we will uh, send out another recording Tuesday evening, Tuesday evening service, and then our Bible study on Wednesday. Okay, so we will uh, make sure you get those. Okay, um, our YouTube channel is John M. Polk. It's P-O-L-K. John M. Polk. Okay, and that's on YouTube. And you'll be able to find these uh, messages and Bible studies there. Okay, let's go ahead and go to our Bible reading. Do remember your tithes and your offerings. Uh, once again, you can go to uh, myntcc.org backslash Oceanside. And there's a donate button there. And you'll be able to give and pay your tithe. Okay, let's go to our Bible reading. We're going to be in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 23. It's one verse of Scripture. I want to read verse 26. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which was within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for this time to hear your word once again. God, for just everyone who I will be listening, and we just ask your blessing tonight. God, continue to move in each heart, each life. God, help us. God, we look to you not only in this service, God, but we look to you, God, for a healing in our land and across this world. We just ask you to, to help us, God. We look to you, God. We know you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you, God, and we love you. We praise you right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Years ago, I was getting fuel in my car at a local gas station. And this gas station had a car wash attached to it, part of the gas station. And as I was fueling my car, I noticed people coming in and out of the car wash and, uh, you know, getting their cars clean and pulling over, vacuuming out the inside, uh, wiping down the outside, getting the, the water off of the cars. And... As they were leaving the car wash, there was a sign okay, with a little car on it, cute little cartoon-looking car with a hood open, and it said, make the inside clean also. And that's what we want to preach about tonight, make the inside clean also. This was just an uh, advertisement for a fuel additive that was supposed to help make your engine clean, but it spoke to my heart because like... Uh, people only cleaning the outside of the car, there are many that are only concerned with the exterior. And they're only concerned with what is seen by others, what others maybe uh, perceive of them or how they appear to other people. And they, they live their lives that way. Their whole life is wrapped up in uh, trying to satisfy peer pressure and uh, um, wondering what other people think about them. It's a very sad way to live because you can never satisfy people. Okay, Thank God tonight that when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, we can live our lives to satisfy and to please Him. But there are many that they live their lives this way. They live for the here and now, the, the appearance, the pleasures, the attainments in this world, but they fail to take care of the inside. Yes, the outside may look good, and it may seem squared away, but you know what, brother and sister, just like with a car, if we don't take care of the inside, sooner or later, it's going to break down. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 18. He said, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. 
Matthew 23 and verse 27, beginning there. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto a whited sepulcher, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and full of uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Okay, there. Yes, there may be pleasure in sin for a season, but... We have to understand something tonight, that the wages of sin is death. And first and foremost, we must be concerned with making the inside or making the heart clean and keeping it clean. Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He also went on to tell us there that we are to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. You know, the very joy that you seek, the love, the contentment in your life, the peace of mind. People look to things, outward things, things of the world, but only God can give you these things in your heart, my friend. Jesus Christ will give you what you're looking for in your heart, amen? Looking diligently, brother and sister, to him. Hebrews 12 and 15, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Yes, the outside may be uh, primped and pampered and made up, my friend, but what's going on on the inside? Are we full of bitterness? Do we have these roots of bitterness in our heart? This is where many fail and many lose it, my friend, because their priority and their focus is not the Lord. They're not looking diligently to the Lord Jesus Christ. They're only looking to the exterior. They're not concerned with making that inside clean. Amen. They're not concerned with having a right heart and a right spirit. These first and foremost are the things that we need to be concerned with the priority and the focus being on the Lord Jesus Christ. There are those who try to live right in their own ability. We dealt with some of that uh, earlier uh, in the service uh, uh, last night that we, that we preached. They haven't allowed Jesus to have that rightful place in their hearts and in their lives, and they have not allowed him to make the inside clean. I'm going to make a statement, and the statement is very profound. I'm laughing because it really is very simple. We cannot live godly. We cannot live for the Lord without the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not possible, my friend. Jesus said in John chapter 15 and verse 5, he said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. You have a hard time maybe in your life living for God. You you have a hard time simply doing right and keeping a, a, a right spirit and a right heart. My friend, we need to ask ourselves the question, is Jesus truly the Lord of our hearts and our lives? We need to let Jesus, we need to allow him to clean up the inside. When we let Jesus clean up the inside, you won't have to watch your language, my friend. You don't have to watch whether or not you curse because cursing will not be in there. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If it's not inside, it's not going to come out. And thank God tonight, Jesus can make the inside clean. When a car is clean on in the engine, when you change the oil and, and you, you uh, uh, make sure things are, are proper and, and, and running correctly, it, it, it gives you a, a peace of mind. It gives you, gives you a sense of security, doesn't it? Not, not concerned or not worried about whether or not the car will break down because you take care of it. Not just the exterior, but you do the necessary maintenance. Are you with me tonight? You do the necessary things to keep things running right. Thank God. Thank God that we can hear the word of God. Thank God that we can pray, brothers and sisters. Thank God that we can read the word of God. Thank God that we can fellowship with other Christians. These things, these tools, if you will, God has given us to help us, my friend, to keep things running right. Well, when that car is maintained correctly, it runs better, doesn't it? But yes, there may still be problems in life. There may be uh, sin in the world. Thank God we're in the world, but we're not of the world. There may be potholes. There may be 
reckless drivers, especially here in California. You know what I'm talking about tonight, etc. and etc. But and sister, but the Lord gives us the ability to overcome these things. He gives us the ability through his son, Jesus Christ, by the spirit of God to overcome these things. He makes you and I conquerors, brother and sister, in this world. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's Romans 8 and 35 through 39. Brother and sister, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not, not the things of this world, not the problems that you face, not coronavirus or any other thing, brother and sister. We can stay in the love of God. We allow Jesus to make the inside clean. And we, brother and sister, take the tools and the spirit that God gives us and we keep the inside clean with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we do that, brother and sister, things can absolutely, absolutely continue on, brothers. Keep running the way that it's supposed to run. Again, no, uh, uh, we understand tonight that there are obstacles, but you and I can keep driving on for the Lord. Amen. We can keep driving on with the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one thing that can separate you and I uh, from the love of God, and that is unrepented sin. Thank God tonight, if there is sin in your life, you can repent of that sin. Not only can you come and ask God for forgiveness, confessing that sin to him, my friend, but you can, and this is part of repentance, you can turn away from it. You can make it up in your mind, in your heart, and that's what you've got to do. You've got to make it up in your heart and in your mind. I'm not going to be that way. I'm not going to to disobey God. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to allow that in my life. My relationship with God, my heart and the condition of my heart is more important to me and my relationship with God than that sin that I am repenting of. Amen. Why leave it that way? The cleansing agent is here. We need all, we have all that we need to make the inside clean. It's available and it's free. Amen. I'm reminded of a verse of scripture in the book of Acts where Philip was preaching to an Ethiopian eunuch and uh, he believed the word of God. Uh, Philip explained it to him and he believed upon it, brother and sister, and he saw some water there and he said, here is water. What doth hinder me from being baptized? And Philip responded to him, if you believe in all of your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God, the Lord, he said, thou mayest. He said, I believe. What's stopping you tonight, my friend? What is stopping us? Everything that we need is here. The cleansing agent is here. Amen. It's not, it's not some fuel additive. It's not some detergent. It's not some disinfectant or some bleach, brother, sister. It is the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ, that innocent, sinless son of God who came down, brother, sister, born of a virgin in Bethlehem, who lived a sinless, innocent life and gave that sinless, innocent life upon Calvary's cross to die for my sin and your sin and the sin of the whole world. That if we would confess, brother and sister, the Lord Jesus, confess our sin to him, repent of that sin and turn to him, that price that he paid could be applied to your life and to my life and to anyone, anyone who would receive it. Faith in Jesus, faith in his blood applied to our lives. Apply to those who receive it, brother and sister, on God's terms. We've got to come to God, God's way. You know, Jesus spoke of himself. 
And people think, well, you're narrow-minded. You think there's only one way to be saved. There is only one way to be saved. Jesus said it himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. It's not a man-made religion. It's not like other religions, brother and sister. It is the plan of salvation that has been ordained of Almighty God. The sin of the world was taken out. The punishment for the sin of the world was taken out upon his sinless son when he hung upon the cross. Just Justice was served. Are you with me today? It's been paid for. Why leave it the way that it is? Why leave it running roughshod? Why, why leave it, brother and sister, breaking down and, 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 and not getting you where you want to go? Where do you want to go tonight? I don't know about you, but I want to make it to heaven, my friend. Amen. I want to make it all the way with Jesus. There are many that break down on this road to life because the inside is not clean. Well, tonight we don't have to leave it that way we can call upon the Lord and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved they shall be saved not might be saved not could be saved but my sister they shall be saved you know there's there's no limit to the power that God has you might think tonight that you're too sinful that you're too evil I'm reminded of a man in the Bible, he wrote quite a bit of the New Testament. His name was Saul, and then after he became a Christian, his name was changed to Paul. He, he began to be called Paul instead of Saul. This man persecuted the church. This man literally had people hauled away and imprisoned and some put to death, my friend, because they were Christians. But he did it ignorantly. He thought he was doing what God wanted him to do. And later on, he called himself the chiefest of sinners. Do you know tonight when that man was confronted by God, God uh, 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 stopped uh, him on the way that he was going on his way to Damascus. And when he was confronted by Almighty God, he had the right response. Jesus told him, he said, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. You're fighting against me. Well, tonight, brother and sister, we need to stop fighting against the almighty God. He said his response to the Lord. He said, who are you? He said, I am the Lord. He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. And Paul's response to the Lord was, he said, Lord, what will you have me to do? You know, that needs to be our simple response tonight. God, things have been dirty in my heart. Things have been wrong in my heart. God, you're, you're intervening in my life. And simple messages like this and others that are preaching and dealing with my heart. God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Brother and sister, when we're willing to humble ourselves and seek God with all of our heart that way, when we're willing to surrender, Render and stop fighting God. We will find him, brother and sister. He will come into our heart and in our lives, and he will make the inside clean. He'll make the inside clean. Aren't you tired tonight of being dirty? Aren't you tired of all the bitterness, all the hypocrisy, all the fake, the put on? My friend, tonight... It can change. We can ask Jesus to make the inside clean. We can call upon the name of the Lord and we can be saved. Tonight it's up to you. As we began to prepare to close this sermon, I remember fighting against God in my life and all that he wanted. And I thought maybe that I needed to go through some religious sacraments. It's the way I was brought up. And there came a day in my life where I just saw how wicked and evil I really was. But we didn't leave it that way. I humbled myself before God and I prayed and I told God, I said, God, I don't want to be this way. I want you to take this junk out of my heart. My friend, when I was willing to surrender to him, to surrender my sin, do you know that Jesus came in? He took away the anger and the bitterness and the hatred. And he filled me with a peace and a love that I've never experienced up to that time. But you know, God is not a respecter of persons. He made my heart clean. And he will make your heart clean. My friend, it's up to you. 
Will you ask him to clean your heart? To make the inside clean. 